Hello and welcome to the CNBC Africa special. I'm Chris Bishop. Now, as we go into a new decade, there's a different face at the helm of Africa's richest city. Jeffrey McCorville is the new mayor of Johannesburg and has a Herculean task ahead of him. He has to manage the finances of this great, yet in places fading city, to shore up its infrastructure and its image. The new mayor also has to encourage new investors from around the world to pour in capital to grow the economy of the city. Quite a job running a city with more than 4 million, maybe as many as 5 million people now. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, and it's you're six weeks into the job, but it's in the first week at your desk this year. I understand you've had something like 250 meeting requests in your first week. There must be some sort of record. <laughs> How busy is it starting up? <laughs> good afternoon, Chris, and good afternoon to the viewers. We, we, we're starting out on a bang. Um, you know, we get uh, requests from all over. Uh, business people wanting to meet, communities wanting to meet, individuals wanting to meet. Uh, I've got a meeting request from universities. Uh, so, so I think there's excitement that uh, this change uh, is bringing to the city of Johannesburg. People are seeing a bit of a positive change in the city. And I'm welcoming the, the interest in meeting me in the city. You know, welcome all the ideas. But it's a record. Eh? In the first week, uh, first, first week and a half of this year, to about 250 meeting requests. But we'll make time for all of them. And it's very difficult because you can't really afford to ignore anyone, can you, in your job? No, you can't do that. Uh, it will be suicide. Um, we, we are going to meet everyone. Um, of course, you have to give them time. Some are waiting. Like, uh, you know, I got a request from one of the two universities uh, from the, the vice chancellor. But already they send you the notice that we want to talk about this. Please apply your mind. Let's do all this. So I think uh, because we've got a partnership with WITS and UJ, so, so both the vice chancellor, Saddam Habib, and uh, Professor Marwala, um, we, you know, we, we, we talk to them about how to innovate, how to grow uh, Jobek, how to bring uh, innovation and new ideas into Jobek to inject uh, the economy to rise here. And just to recap for the viewers, uh, you were elected in December. Uh, the previous mayor, Herman Mashaba, stepped down. Um, and uh, the EFF that was supporting the DA uh, was went out, uh, the, the coalition broke up, and you were elected 137 to 103 votes in the council, which I'm told is something of a landslide in, uh, in the council history. But it was a very fractious time during the turnover. There were a lot of allegations flying around, a lot of allegations against you. Some people said that uh, you'd been involved in things in the past. How, how do you respond to all those allegations? The, the, the allegation started last year sometime with an, one article from, uh, from one, one, one media house. Um, we responded to the articles and, and the story has not developed any further. You know, people are regurgitating the same things. And in my view is that I said I've responded, or, you know, I've given evidence. I even wrote to the public protector. I even wrote to the ANC integrity committee to say I'm prepared to stand in any competent uh, authority to tell my story because I think the allegations are false. I just think the allegations are misplaced, the, the, the innuendos um, and all that. So, so my, it was a gift to my, to my uh, detractors. Um, so so a, a, a week before, or even a day before, you know, you get a headline saying, tainted mayor. <laughs> I'm not even a mayor. <laughs> and I uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know we just take it in our stride. Um, there are people who just thrive on negativity. Um, and you're not going to waste our time uh, focusing on them. We've got a job to do. Yes, 137 was a huge landslide. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a huge confidence uh, motion of, no, of confidence in, in, in my abilities and in us. And we, we dare not let the parties and the people who voted us uh, in office down. So, um, and how difficult is it taking over? You've had one particular party running things for a few years, and now your guys are, are coming in. Um, what, what is it like, that sort of uh, cultural change, as it were, I in the council? How hard is it to manage? For, for us, Chris, we call it uh, disruption. You know, you know we, we, were, we were in charge for, 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 for the first phase of pre interim from 95 to 2000, when Jobek was uh, amalgamated into a unicity in 2000, that uh, Amos Masondo had 10 full years of really forming this government, solidifying it, changing so way to uh, bringing different systems together. As we said in, during the struggle days, one city, one tax base to turn Jobek into one integrated city. That's what the first 10 years. And then Pakistan, okay, five years. So from 2016 to 2013, for us, it's a disruption. And as we go back, we say, hey, what, has what is the cost of this disruption uh, in the three years? That's really what I've been preoccupying myself with in the last six weeks. Uh, so that we, we, we are confident that we had the right programs, we had the right uh, priorities, and we're just carrying on, you know, changing a few things, tweaking a few things. 
Look, the last three years, we can't say 100% of things were bad, but we're still really counting the cost of the disruption. And uh, you, the biggest headache you've got is the uh, financial system of the city, which you've got uh, obviously a lot of work to do on uh, so far. I mean, you, you said you want to try to get in there and change the model, and you've gone as far as to say in the press, you said that if it's not changed, there could be the financial collapse of Johannesburg. Um, how hard is that job going to be? It's going to be a hard job. In, in around 1999, the city of Johannesburg, in fact, we inherited... Uh, at the dawn of democracy, a really broke city. So, so we changed the model of Johannesburg and we, we decided to deliver services via the municipal owned entities. Now, three utilities, which is Pick It Up, Johannesburg Water, and, um, and City Power, were what we call the revenue generating utilities. So, the model of the city was that those will, will generate surpluses, and these surpluses will then subsidize the non-revenue generating activities of the city to, to, you know, to augment the equitable share from national so that, you know, um, the roads ro 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 road resurfacing, potholes, that's the maintenance, grass cutting and all that can be, can be cross-subsidized. So the cross-subsidization model can only work if Jobe Gota City Power generates surpluses. Now, City Power is operating at a loss. We're sitting now, even the cash deficit is around 3 billion rents. Now, if, if the Jobe model is not working, then it means that the very base of what you're supposed to be doing um, is, is, is going to collapse. Now, you know, we've, we've thrown a graph, Chris, that from 2016 to now 2019, the, the cash, even in the city, moved from 5 billion right down in 2019 to around 2 billion rents. It's only out last year, I don't know how miraculously it went up to 5 billion, but it's very clear they were not paying creditors, they were not, you know, it was just a balance sheet entry. But there's a, there's a graph that shows us that there's, there's been a steady decline in the financial position of the city of Johannesburg. Now, now you know, I've given the MMC's focus. You're focusing on uh, uh, re-strengthening city power, uh, pick it up, must do its work, and then we're re really looking at the financial situation of the city. Uh, cutting some costs, but remember, you can't cut costs. Uh, you know, traffic lights have to work. You have to fill in potholes. You have to cut grass. Uh, you know, storm water systems must work. There must be water in the tap. So the municipal services must still work. But at the same time, we'll be focusing on, on the finance. I've been there for five years, um, <laughs> and we can do it. <laughs> and as I say, you've got your work cut out. I mean, this city power issue, I mean, more than three billion uh, in liabilities. How come that much debt has built up in this time? That's what we're investigating. How, how did they manage to destroy what, what used to be the premier, um, pre premier entity of the city? You know, it was our cash generator. We... We were, we were, you know, high up there. You know, we we're generating lots of surpluses. We we're maintaining um, the, in the electricity infrastructure. We were, you, you know, we, we, we introduced smart metering system. Now, how they destroyed that value, that shareholder value. And by the way, the shareholders are the systems of Johannesburg. So mm -hmm. if you destroy a shareholder value to that extent, um, I mean, we were still investigating what exactly happened so that we can stem the, 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 the losses in infrastructure and then reverse reverse the, the losses in city power. How could this debt at city power um, weaken its performance? I mean, in a time when people are complaining in the city, as you know, about power cuts all the time, how could this be a problem at city power, this huge debt? No, no it, is, it will be a problem. It will be a problem in that uh, your, your reinvestment in infrastructure would require subsidies. Y you know, if, you know, you know the, the problem, let's say, with uh, some of the SOEs, where it's supposed to be self-sustaining, and, you know, it leads permanent bailouts. <laughs> That's how city power will succeed. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to progress. Now, we won't have money to bail it out. We don't have, you know, the tax base to bail out city power. Instead, our model is that city power must subsidize, uh, uh, you know, city, uh, the zoo. You know, the zoo must mm -hmm. be subsidized. Mm -hmm. uh, the city power must subsidize city parks, which cuts grass and all that, symmetries. Um, now, now if, if the model changes, then it means that the work is cut out for us as governance to look at how then do we remodel the city to be sustainable. So one of the focus areas, our first priorities, we call it financial sustainability and resilience. Uh, so that's what we're focusing on. But surely as well with the economy where it is at the moment, it must be very difficult to get fresh revenue in. And bearing in mind rates and taxes, there are a few people paying these days, companies closing down, um, problems with collection uh, from hard-pressed consumers. How are you going to sort things out in the face of all of that? No, no, no you're correct. That, um, you know, the downturn in the economy uh, is putting pressure on, on, on the customer. And, and we, we have a problem in the city of Johannesburg, Chris, that 
we we not number one on, on what you call the consumer's wallet. Um, mm. You know, we've done research that uh, people prefer to do other things. You know, they pay their their you know their DSTV uh, subscriptions. Others play the lotto is number two, pay school fees, pay transport. We rank number like number five or number six. And part of the work we're trying to do mm. is to elevate the city. Uh, you know, ranking in, in, in people's wallets and purses uh, to around <laughs> number one or number two because people are hard-pressed, you know, mm. there's, there's contraction in people's real disposable income and, and, and people are now beginning to pull back on some of the services. There's no paying. So, so there's pressure. There's pressure on the city budget. Not only that, there's pressure on the national fiscals. Now, the, the transfers that, are c that come to sub-national government, both province and, and, and local government, is under pressure. The local government envelope we know for a fact is going to be reducing. Now, equitable share is going to go down. The conditional grants are going to go down. So, so you need a city now that generates its own income because the city of Johannesburg relies about 70, 65 to 70% on its own income generation. Now, if that reduces to around 50%, then automatically means that we can, be, we can uh, 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 you know, give quality services to residents. Now, the work is to focus on rebuilding the reserves of the city, given the constraints, the economic constraints that we face. And we think we are up to the job and we can do it. And it must be made even more difficult because last year um, the city council had that write-off um, program where you could register and get 50% of your debts written off if you qualified. That must have taken millions out of the, uh, the coffers of Johannesburg City. I, th I think that was part of the problem of, uh, of, 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 of you know, governance in, in, in the last three years, that the, the collection rate it's supposed to be at you know at minimum around 94 95 percent of what you bill now now there's a difference between what you budget to bill and what you bill because city power part of its problem is that it's under billing mm. uh, you, you, know, you know the, the cash gap the revenue gap between what they budgeted for city power and what they uh, landed at is a billion rents mm. last year now, now no wonder they've got a cash problem and it's been happening for the last three years so, so cumulatively, if you under budget on revenue and you do nothing on your, on your expenditure line item, then it means you're going to, you know, you could be in deficit over time. So, so, so budgeted revenue is low. And then even in the low, low, low budget revenue, you still under collect by 5%. Now, now 5% of 30 billion is a lot of money. It's 1.5 billion rents. So if you don't have cash of 1.5 billion rents that you, you under collect, <laughs> mm. then, then Chris, I mean, you, you're heading mm. for a disaster. Now, you've been quoted in it's the press. It's actually 150 billion, so 1.5, yeah. You've been quoted in the press here saying you, you're determined to stamp out malfeasance and corruption yes. in this city. Yes. Um, and in your first weeks of the job, you've been out investigating and I understand you've uncovered some interesting stuff which you're going to share with CNBC Africa for the first time <laughs> uh, that you've actually found as an exclusive. Just tell us some of the things that, that you've come across. No, look, I'll just say two things for now that, you know, we, 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 as opposition, we were worried about the process of insourcing of security guards and, uh, and cleaners. Now, the, the principle of insourcing itself is not, is not a problem, but what is a problem is the bankability, you know, you know the, the financial modeling thereof. We did say, guys, this thing is not financial. We know the city. We can't afford this. They went ahead anyway. Now, what is worrying to us is that the plan was to uh, insource about 2,700-odd security guards, but they ended up insourcing 5,100. Five, five now, now, the gap, we believe these people were not in the city. They were not to be insourced. We don't know where they are from. Who, how they, it's fraud. It's really fraud. And that's what we're investigating, to say, how did they come? And, and, and we're going to be pursuing that whoever was responsible for building the city. Now, there's 150 million rents per year gap to close. Because mm. remember, you, you're transferring what, what used to be a contracted service mm. into a salary. Now, if you bring a new cost, 150 million rents a year, and growing, by the way, because it, remember, salaries have to grow every year. And there's no money to, there's no, there's no money to cover it. So, so that gap of 150 million rents, somebody will have to be responsible for it and then we'll deal with it. That's the first. Two. Could, could there be convictions on something like that? Well, if you say I'm mean, insourcing Chris Bishop, and Chris <laughs> Bishop was not in the post. Remember, you have to insource somebody who, who, who was a contracted to you mm -hmm. to perform that very service that you want inside. Now you say, no, 
Now you're not contracted to CNBC, you're contracted to the city of Johannesburg as a full-time employee. Now, if they bring Chris, Chris Priest, I mean, not be Chris Bishop, Chris <laughs> Priest, <laughs> if they bring Chris Priest in now, and he was not even on site, mm. and you say, no, I'm insourcing somebody, that's not, that can't be the truth, that's something else. What else have you found apart from that? Well, uh, uh, the fleet issue has been in the media. Uh, and, and, and what's, 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 what's being uncovered about uh, you know, the Regulation 32 that they used, the costing thereof, uh, it's quite scary. Um, you know, there's been follow-up from media houses about that. Um, you know, the Red Fleet is in court at the moment. We, we don't even have fire engines. We don't even have ambulances mm. because they, 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 the supply chain process was not followed. They just hired one company willy-nilly. One took them to court. The court said, uh, put an interdict that you can't supply. The city is exposed. And by the way, that company was paid without delivery. Mm. <laughs> so, so, so you know, you, you know, trying to 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 appear clean, and while 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 you, uh, shenanigans are happening underneath, uh, is, is quite a problem. You know, the the issue of uh, the pick it up fleet. Pick it up is operating at eighty nine percent fleet availability, and it's because the contractual problems there that that face pick it up are huge um, so so chris we we are really are facing situations that we want to turn them around for the benefit of me and you are residents of the city what would you uh, what's your attitude to anybody who's found um with a hand in the till or a, a contract or anything within the city of johannesburg what are you going to do full might of the law full might of the law um you know you're going to throw a book at you um, especially because of the losses that were incurred uh, uh, in the city when people pay for services that were not rendered. Uh, that's one thing that you know you would agree with my predecessor on that you should not have any tolerance for malfeasance. You shouldn't have any tolerance for 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 corruption. You should not have any tolerance for fraud or any of those uh, uh, negative things that uh, steal from the citizens of Johannesburg. That part I agree with him on. And again, you've got a huge job out there on the streets. Um, as we say, traffic lights aren't working, potholes, some roads are falling apart, grass isn't cut. How are you going to tackle this huge job? And which bits are you going to start with first, do you think? M my focus is what I call the, da the daily lived experience of the citizens of Johannesburg. Now, when you wake up every morning, you engage with the city of Johannesburg. You switch on the lights, <laughs> mm. you open the tap, you know, you want to brush your teeth. Um, you either drive out via public transport or your own car, you get onto the road, you meet the traffic light, stop street, the traffic light, you meet the pothole. So you're continually engaging with us without even noticing <laughs> that you're engaging with the city of Johannesburg. I want that experience to be flawless. I want that experience to be very positive. You know, when you look at your park in your neighborhood, it must be well manicured. You know, the grass must be cut. Um, that's... There mustn't be illegal dumping. The streets must be clean. We want to deal with the issue of vagrants, the issue of homeless people sleeping under bridges, dating our cities. You know, take them into shelters and, and get our city clean. That's that for me. How you engage with the city on a daily basis, with subconsciously so. I want that, that experience to be very positive. Now, in your time, you're promoting a 100 billion rand infrastructure plan for the city. Where are the main points where that money is going to go? It's a continued program. It was started by the former mayor, Park Stahu. Um, we, we then identified uh, four types of infrastructure. Um, we, we, we identified backlogs. We have to deal with backlogs. You know, so we just got backlogs. Alex got backlogs. Uh, but the backlogs are growing because as people come into the city, they, they, they settle on the margins of the city. They, they, they come, basically they're transferring rural poverty into urban poverty, uh, you know, poverty in the urban areas. So we'll deal with backlog infrastructure. Uh, two, there's aging or aged infrastructure in the city. We know Joburg was discovered what, uh, 18, gold was discovered in what, 1897. Joburg started 1902 or 03. Some infrastructure has been built, you know, since then. Um, we need to upgrade that infrastructure. Climate change, there's a rainier season now. The season, uh, the rain is heavier uh, and much more intense. The stormwater system can take, um, so, so if it floods, uh, and the M1, M2, uh, you know, floods, because of the gridlock, people divert into the inner city, what happens? The economy can work because it's a gridlock in the inner city. So we have to upgrade the infrastructure. Thirdly, we have to deal with economic infrastructure. 
uh, you know, I make an example that if you if you go to an area like City Deep, we've got a dry port there. You know, there are containers in the dry port. The roads, because of trucks, the roads are bad. So we have to upgrade the roads, ensure that you know there's movement of goods and services. You know, it's f it's, it's it's flawless. So 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 that will focus on. And, and lastly, it's social infrastructure. But for every rent we spend as a city, you know, we want to attract infrastructure. Uh, uh, private sector to join us in, in, in upgrading the, um, the infrastructure. And, and we are on that drive. You know, it's not only the, the relying on the private sector. We say we can match you. You know, we put in a rent, put in two, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with returns um, uh, and all that. So, so, so we're not only focusing on the inner city. You know, run back. You know, mm. you know run back. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing parts of the city, I understand, yeah. as well. So, so, so you're growing towards waterfall, but yeah. waterfall is next to mid-rent, which is decaying. So you have to deal with, with, with midrand coming this way so that as waterfall meets with midrand, you know, it's just one seamless um, uh, uh, urban, 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 urban form. Because uh, I was just looking at the figures. I mean, between 1996 and 2017, Johannesburg was growing at 3.6%. Uh, I'm sure the entire economy would uh, like that kind of a growth rate over this particular time. But as I said in the intro, you're going to be looking for investors everywhere. Yes, yes. How far are you prepared to go to look for that uh, private money? You know, fortunately, the president uh, uh, has been on investment drive, you know, uh, Invest SA and all that. Uh, the province at Africa Investment Forum. So, so we're not going to duplicate. We're going to join in with the uh, national and province. We, we, we are in conversation with the presidency. Um, you know, I was making an example to the staff in the office earlier on that investments are in cities and towns. <laughs> so <laughs> as the president... <laughs> attracts investment. There, there's no place called national. <laughs> 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 People live and work in cities and towns. So as we invest, there's, there's some investment that must come to Jobek, but there's certain things that Jobek must do. The ease of doing business. Uh, you know, you must cut red tape. So, so we're on that process of how do we cut red tape? How do we ensure that uh, the when, when the investment investor knocks and says, look, I want to put up a factory, the process from application township application to approval to zoning, you know, is takes three months. You know, getting the EIA from the province is quite quick, at the most a month. So at in no time, you know, we turn the sort and the building goes up. So so we're talking to the president, to the presidency and the province to 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 say where do we get new money? I mean there have been commitments to invest with the president. Where where are those commitments going? They must come to us. So so we as cities must compete on the ease of doing business as the president brings uh, investment into, 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 into the country. What you know, for instance, I was talking to one bank. Uh, the bank is based in Sente. Uh, on, on Saturday, the Jobek opened. And they were saying, you know, we've got 4 billion rands to invest in a particular area. Property, you know, mixed use. But the problem is you. The problem is the city. You know, uh, we've got applications been lying there for a year. Now I said 4 billion rands. I mean, you can translate into how many jobs. Mm. And not only that, the land is lying fallow. If you put investment of four billion, the translation into the rates income, the electricity income, the water income, I mean, it can help sustain the city. So, so I, don't, I don't understand why people can take time to. What is your target uh, as mayor for foreign investment a year? <laughs> for me, the sky is the limit. <laughs> um, I have not set targets yet um, because I, I, as I say, I, 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 I want to deal with them as they come. Um, but in, uh, as we plan for 2020, 2021, we'll put a target on us and we'll, we'll communicate the target. In the last six weeks, I've not thought through the target. Uh, just uh, a little bit about yourself. You were born in Rockville, in yes. Soweto. Yes. And did you ever think one day you would be up there <laughs> as uh, the mayor of the city you were born in, ever, when you were young? It's, it's never been my, 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 my aim to be a, a career politician. I was an activist, um, so, so, and... And for me, it was really a defeat of a system. Mm. And beyond that, which is why even post-democracy, you know, I worked a bit in, in, in rural development in 94, 95, a few months for ESCOM generation audit, uh, ESCOM internal audit generation, um, and, and then went into entrepreneurship. So, so it's, I've never, but remained an activist, remained in the structures. And so now, now, now people, you know, as I go back to the township, people are proud. I never once thought that, I'll be mayor of Johannesburg, but it's a responsibility I welcome with, 
with both hands and uh, it's a responsibility. And you joined the struggle in the mid 80s at yes. the time of the state of emergency. Yes. And uh, then went uh, right through, but you were telling me before the show that in your household it was the ANC and Orlando Pirates. Yes. Yes. That was it. And you remaining loyal even though this season hasn't been that great for them. Huh? I remain loyal and I've got a nine year old, you know, uh, she knows it's Pirates and the ANC because that's what we talk about in the house, you know. Um, we're struggling this year, uh, but I think we'll turn around. You know, the last few games, uh, I'm hoping, you know, to today is a big game against <laughs> Sundowns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you've got a deficit with Sundowns, and it's something that uh, we'll have to turn around. Uh, tonight I'll be watching and saying, uh, <laughs> we must win this game. And the new coach, you think he's going to do it for them? Uh, you know, you know the, the signs are there. You know, we, we played, uh, uh, four, we had a 4-1 win last year. Uh, we played a draw, we won. I think the signs are, are good. Uh, we believe that it will turn around. You know, it's the same players. It's amazing how, you know, leadership um, can make a difference because these are the same players, but just a different coach. But in three games or four games, they've operated differently. So, so myself as a mayor, uh, with the same team in the city, uh, I can confident that they'll operate very differently because of the leadership style. <laughs> now, on your Twitter handle, it says you're um, an eternal activist, father, husband, and pirate supporter. Does that sum you up? Is there any more about Jeff McCorbel that uh, you think um, is not revealed in that line? <laughs> Wait, there are a couple <laughs> of things that are not revealed. But when I say eternal activist, it doesn't just mean politics. You know, it means that I'm a community worker. I, 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 you know, I just want change in life. I want better life. Um, so, so eternal activism means uh, that uh, wherever there are hardships will find me there, whether it's in religion, whether it's in community activism, or it's in sports, or it's in uh, politics. Um, that's, that's, that's really where, where you'll find us. Uh, one of the things that uh, we don't find there is that, you know, I, I, I like reading, I read incessantly. I mean, you come to my study, it's just books and books and books. And I try to get my children into, into the habit of reading, even though, you know, we get the resistance around there because of YouTube. And mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're these days there are gadgets and, and, and all that, but we try and get them to read because you have to be aware of the world around you. And I don't think you can lead if you're not aware. You need to be, your, your horizons must be much broad. You know, you need to be widely read to, to be able to lead 27,000 people. You can't just do it on general knowledge. It can't happen. Well, you and I must keep up the child reading battle and one day, hopefully, <laughs> we will win. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. That was uh, Jeffrey Makobo, the new uh, mayor of the city of Johannesburg, who's uh, got to deal with uh, 250 meeting requests this week. We wish him the best of luck of that and the best luck of his uh, stewardship uh, for the, uh, one of the richest cities on the African continent. From me, Chris Bishop, on the CNBC Africa special, it's goodbye.